Zoom enables you to have a video chat with other people. There are also a number of other features which you might find useful, which we will explain in this short video. Joining a Zoom meeting. Joining a meeting is very simple. Your host will send you a link and all you need to do is click on this and follow the instructions. If you have not used Zoom on your computer before, it may ask you to download and run the Zoom application. If so, click on this. Once Zoom has downloaded, click on Open and Zoom will then install itself. You will then get a message asking whether to join with computer audio. Click on Yes. You may then get a message asking you to wait for the host to start the meeting. For security reasons, you'll be placed in a waiting room ready for the host to admit you to the meeting. Once the host has admitted you, you will then get a message asking you to join the meeting with video. Click on this as well. Once admitted, you should then see a screen like this, which is known as gallery view where there are thumbnails of all those present. If necessary, you can click on the square button at the top right hand corner to resize and get full screen view. You can change gallery view to speaker view by clicking on the button in the top right corner and the current speaker is shown much larger. This speaker will change automatically as different people speak. The toolbar. When you move your mouse over the main part of the screen, the toolbar will appear at the bottom for a short while before disappearing. There is a button on the far left which allows you to mute or unmute your audio so that others can or cannot hear you. There is also a button on the left which allows you to switch on or stop video so that others can or cannot see you. In the middle, you will see a chat button which allows you to send a text message which all other participants can see on their screen. The share button allows you to share something that you were working on elsewhere on your computer. If you click on it, you will be asked which of the currently open application windows you wish to share, for example, a PowerPoint presentation. You can then work on that application and the others will be able to see you working on it. If you wish to change applications, you will need to come out of the share screen and then go back in, selecting the new application. There is also a breakout booms button if the host has enabled this feature. The host can then allocate you to a breakout room. This can be used with large meetings where people could have a choice of breakout sessions or to allow several groups of ringers to ring touches together using ringing room. Common problems. It may sound obvious, but you need to have a computer with a webcam, microphone and speaker. Most laptops come with these inbuilt, but some PCs do not. If you do not have them, they can usually be bought online for as little as around £25. If you are not sure, do arrange a trial run with your host, who can then help you troubleshoot any issues. You can also access the settings menu by clicking the up arrow to the right of the mute and video buttons so that you can check your microphone and other settings. Hosting a meeting. Zoom seems to be the most widely used application and many towers are already using it for a chat. The disadvantage of Zoom is that only 40 minutes are free. An account is under £15 a month for unlimited time and frequency of use. Why not get your tower or district or branch to pay for an account if someone does not already have a paid account? Once you have downloaded the application, you will see the home screen. To schedule a meeting, click on the button and the following window will appear. Under Topic, give your meeting a useful name. You then have the option of scheduling your meeting for a specific date and time. However, if you are going to be holding a meeting regularly, we suggest you tick the recurring meeting box so that the same link is used for all meetings. Otherwise, you will need to set up a new meeting link each time. 
Make sure that the video buttons for both host and participants are changed to on. Also change the dial-in from United States to United Kingdom or wherever you're located to get local dialing codes if any of your participants are joining by phone. Then save and follow the instructions. You will then be given the link for the Zoom meeting which you can forward on to your participants. When participants sign into the meeting, you will receive a message on your screen from the waiting room inviting you to admit them to the meeting. Changing the host. You can make another participant the host of the meeting by going to Participants and clicking on their name and then clicking on Make Host. You can then leave the meeting or remain a participant. Useful commands. The host can mute individual members by clicking on the Participants button. You can mute individuals by clicking on their name or there is a mute all button at the bottom. In the top right hand corner of the screen is a full screen button which enables you to change between full screen mode and partial screen mode. You can also change the position of this window on your screen by clicking on the white bar at the top which says zoom meeting and moving the window with your mouse. You can also change the size of this window by hovering your mouse over one of the edges and a two-way arrow appears. You can then click on this arrow and drag the edge to make the window larger or smaller. Whilst the screenshots in this video have been prepared in Windows 10, you may find that in different computers and tablets the screens are different and features may appear elsewhere on the screen. If you have problems or if you would like to find out more about the other functionality and features of Zoom, there are lots of useful videos on the zoom.us website. Go to resources and look for video tutorials or search for helpful videos in your search engine.